Right then. So, on tonight's bits and bobs, or the next video, all the valves are back in where they should do. So, we're all happy with that side. Now what we're going to do is take a couple of measurements. Now, I want to measure the height of the head purely for reference. So, I know whether the head's been skimmed or not. Now, again, go back to the manual. Haynes manual, Bentley manual, whatever you want to want. Cylinder head is what we're looking for. The minimum height is 118one millimeter. measure through the cylinder head hole. So, at that height, cylinder height, with everything else, it produces a 10 to 1 compression ratio. So, if you start having a head skimmed, say if they skimmed, and if that went to point 117.8, that me measurement then adjusts that compression ratio. So, if we want to rebuild an engine and keep the standard compression ratio of 10 to 1, like I've done my 1.9, it's 10.54 to 1. So everything's been measured bang on to keep the standard compression ratio. So what we want to do is make sure at the moment that is where it is. So we know relevant to the deck heart and the block, which I'll come to in another video, that we will maintain the same compression ratio with the head. So all we'll do is just measure through various bolt holes to get a measurement as close as we can as that. Um, and then that will give us a damn good idea whether it's been skimmed or not. Again, this is a 16 valve, and I know I'm rebuilding a 9A, but the cylinder head is an 027 head, which is exactly the same casting as the KRs. So these measurements are the same, vice versa with the heads. So all we're doing here is flat ruler, trust little metal ruler, and a vernier. Again, this just gives a good idea of what's going on. Right, so as you can see, that's come through the head there. That's the long end of it. So what you want to do, this is a head bolt hole. Ruler over that hole. Hold it nice and taut. Tight on there. And then you've got the vernier through the top hole like this. So the vernier is through the top there with the end of it. If you don't know much about these tools, simple measuring device, you can do the depth on the back. So when you move it across, you've got the depth there. So again, just pop that through the hole. Rule on the back end of it, covering up the head bolt hole, and all we're doing is just resting that on there. Look at the measurement, and we've got yes, yeah, so that's 118, and it's literally, and that's ding dang just past it, so near no, it makes no difference. That's going to be the 118.1, which is good on there. So we do the same on a couple of different holes. Same measurement there, do a couple on the rear ones again. Yep, same measurement. Let's snap here. There's not a lot of tolerance allowed within the face of the head. I think there's only 0 0.1 millimeters distortion allowed, which is next to nothing. Yep, so we're fine that. So measurements on that we've got is 118.1 which is what is in the manual. So from there, we can ascertain that the head hasn't been skimmed because if the head has been skimmed, it would read under the 118.1, which would then, as I said before, change the compression ratio. So that's fine with that. So we know the head hasn't been skimmed. It probably will have a little, little skim over um, before it gets refitted eventually because it makes sense to just so we know the surfaces are bang on flat and the head gets going to seal. So we're happy with that. So what we're going to do now is turn it over and I'll show you how to CC measure the bowls on the cylinder head. Right, so we've measured the head thickness from there, from the bowl hole. So that gives us a good idea of the head not being skimmed or whatever it is now is in the 118 is going to give the right compression ratio. So what we want to do now is measure the bowl of the cylinder head now pretty simple to do it this is a bit of perspex with a hole drilled in it and a couple of little indents because the 16 valve valves sit just flush uh, just raised of the cylinder head that wants to go on there like that you can pick this up from anywhere this is just an ebay like two quid put a spark plug hole in the hole so you know the hole is blocked up that sits in there what you need to do is seal this and the simplest 
simplest way to seal it. Just some good old grease. So all you want to do is run some grease. Not millions of it, just enough to run a seal all around the outskirts of the actual cylinder head where it's going to seal. This is just general bearing grease, nothing spectacular. You don't need anything expensive or anything, it's just general grease you can pick up anywhere. You could probably use, um, what could you use? You could use lots of things I suppose, but grease is the most easier accessible thing to use, that should be enough. Doesn't matter if it looks messy, it's not there to look pretty. Rub that off. And then what we want to do is you can see all the grease on there and put that on there. As you can see the grease is all filling up the gaps we want to. There. So that's now all sealed up. So now what we want to do is put some fluid inside it. Now I've got the head in a slight angle and the hole up there so you want the air to escape its highest point if there's any bubbles going in there from the fluid you're using. Now I'm just using some cleaning fluid um, with a bit of food colouring dye in it which is blue so I can see it. You can use screen wash which is easy enough. I haven't got any so I'm using what I've got. Now as a rule of thumb 60 valve heads have a 45 um, cc head bowl size. Cc is the same as millilitres so if you put in 45 millilitres in there that's 45 cc so I've got a bottle which I'm going to pour in there which has got 45 millimetres of um, the fluid in there anyway so that should fill that head up as much as possible so what we're going to do try not to spill it There's no need to rush this, do it slowly because there's going to be air bubbles or something in there so you want it, the fluid to be able to naturally let the water, not water, the air escape. That's getting close to the top so you want to slow it right down now, just a couple of drips. As you can see, and that is full up. <laughs> so that's worked as expected. Just hold that firm and wipe that excess off. So that fluid is up there and flush. With the top of that hole, a tiny bubble up there, but near and makes no difference. That is 45 millilitres in there. There you go, another bubble's just popped, filled it up more. So we now know the cylinder bowl in here is measuring 45 cc's. Now it's easy to make a note on these so you know these are 45 cc, the head is as it is. So we know this is pretty much factory from the CC measurements. We know it's pretty much factory from the head. So there's a 99% chance the head is hasn't been skimmed to any massive degree. It's probably had something, I would have thought, because it's been put and polished, you would have thought they'd run it over, but you never know. But again, working off measurements, always work good to work with measurements. 45 CCs in there. 118.1 millimetres on the head thickness. So 
from measurements point of view, what we've got, the head across this face is standard wise, even though it's been ported. Um, so we'll write those measurements down and we'll use those at a later date when we come to rebuild the head and rebuild the engine. So that's all we've got going to do today. So that's a simple way of measuring with that, because once you've got that reading, you'll do a similar thing on the block once I've got the replacement pistons in there and you'll have all these measurements together and that will then give you what the actual engine's compression ratio should be. Um, and again, unless you want to run high compression, um, which on this engine, I doubt it will be, it will be on carbs um, or K-Jet, depending on where it's going to end up. Um, I'll probably be keeping it potentially to put in another project, maybe a caddy or something with some 45 Webers or something cool like that. Once I finish the Mark II, that is. So that's what we do today. That's some procedures measuring that. The head is now finished with. So all we can do is get rid of this, clean it up, get some WD-40 over these, get rid of that spark plug out of there. And then I'm going to put it back on the block because I finished with the block. Again, I'll put some WD-40 in the cylinders, keep those dry, and I'll just probably just put four head bolts back through just to skewer it on there. So then that will be that done. So we'll get on with that now. So as the previous ones, the block's fine. It's got plenty of oil in there. Have a quick squirt now, just so we know. Got plenty of oil just to keep any corrosion away. Head gas is going back on just to give a bit of protection to the mating surfaces. Again, there's nothing I actually found wrong with the head gas on here. The only thing I found wrong with the engine as a whole, from a complete outsider just doing the assessment of what we're doing, was the rear end auxiliary shaft uh, bearing, which had worn, spun itself around and blocked the oil hole. So no oil was going to get in, into that shaft, which would have highlighted that the oil system wasn't working. Um, it would have also set the oil pressure warning systems off. Um, and no amount of changing sensors, filters, parts externally would have stopped that, apart from stripping that shaft out. But hey, that's what we've got. So head gaskets on. Cylinder head's got some WD-40 on the back as well, just to give it a bit more protection. There's the dowel on that. There it is. Right, so that's on the dowel now. Now, if you notice one of the other videos, what I mentioned was the dowel on this gearbox end of the, the block was not proud of the cylinder of the block. So this end, camp out end, I can't move. This end, I can move. So that dowel that sits just in there, I'll bring you over to have a look. That dowel there, which should be higher than that, that's what they do is to prevent the cylinder head moving. Now granted, once all the head bolts are in, this cylinder is not going to move, but again, that'll be something to get readjust once we're ready to um, do a final assembly. So what I'm going to do is just stick one, two, three and four, just going to get those in there, tighten those up, and then that'll be that. So four head bolts in is all we need. Again, it's just to keep it in one piece. Head bolts will be getting replaced because a complete no-no we're using those. So not doing it tight, it's just there. So it's in one piece. So that is that. We are done with this very weathered, very dirty 9A engine, full strip down the cess and half build back up to know what we got. We found a few problems in the bottom end with the previous videos we'll see, mainly with the auxiliary shaft bearings, um, oil pump, bit of grime, but it's been cleaned up. So the block at the moment we need number four cylinder needs to be overboard. So that means all cylinders overboard, new set of pistons, expensive, but I can use the old pistons out of this into another 1900 build. So we will recoup money away that way. Head, turns out it reported, perfect. The valves are all good. The valve guides measure fine, so I ain't got to spend money changing those. Lapped all the valves in. The stem seal was out. 
that's where that is at the moment. We've wiped it back on with a head gasket just so we know it's there, it's nice and tight. That's all I do on this video. Next time around we'll be going through putting the cams back in with the followers, the right orders. I'll show you how to line up the cam timing because there's two specific marks on the inlet and exhaust cams that need to be lined up correctly. Get those again, again not fully fitted in, just going back in nice and lubed up so we know where they are and where they're at. There's no wear in the cams, but the cams are not probably not going to go back in there. I'll probably get some ABF cams or sort of reprofile or something like that, but that'll be later down the line when we decide what's going on with the engine. Hopefully this will have a nice set of 45s on it, um, maybe in a caddy or something, call it that, but that would need fixing first. Not fixing, repairing and finishing. Um, yeah, so next video will be cams. I'll also go through taking the cross plugs or core plugs out back of the block because um, they're cheap as chips to buy. Ideally, you want to get them out because you don't know what's behind them. So look forward to that. So give us a subscribe. Look at the other videos we've got. Um, any comments are perfectly welcome. So thanks for watching.